are familiar with CSS and JavaScript and all that front end. All right, awesome. Very cool. So, uh, Rain had mentioned that I'm going to be taking responsibility for the second iteration of the uh, LA Drupal site. Um, so actually, what I'm trying to do is slab off as much responsibility as possible to you guys, because there's a lot of talent. There. So, um, how many of you guys have been into like really big development teams, like kind of like virtual teams where people are like outsourcing and you're working with them, basically just to do a part of it? All right, cool. So um, that's a drag, and uh, there's going to be a lot of you guys working on that site, hopefully, right? And uh, it would really suck that if people's uh, efforts in the site would be overwritten by someone else. It would really suck if those commits that basically destroyed whatever stuff you're working on. Um, so there's going to be a system that's going to be introduced that basically makes this easier um, to deal with really large, uh, really large groups. So, um, but that's not really what I'm going to talk about um, today. Um, today, I'm just going to talk about how to theme uh, views. And I'll let you offer it. So, um, of you themers, or anybody else who looks at markup, um, who likes the, just the default look of a uh, views markup, just the way it is out of the box? Right here. Yeah. Woo! So, you guys, and everyone else doesn't, right? Because it's really, it's really, it's, really, it's, really, it's, it's just way too much. I'm like a format. I'm format. <laughs> Are any of you guys uh, really into like the semantic web of having like really lightweight markup and making it really clean and easy to maintain, right? I'm, I, I'm kind of crazy over that. Um, I get really picky about my markup. Um, let's take a look at, and first off, let me uh, introduce this. I built a really uh, lightweight site that's really only rendering like five different views and we're just going to be looking at a single page. Um, so we have a bunch of views laid out here and the whole thing here is like using some comments or whatnot. Um, let's take a look at the markup. So this is your basic stuff right here. Can you guys see that? Is that okay? Or? No, bigger. Bigger. <laughs> okay. And meanwhile, let me uh, plug in. Go slower. Oh yeah, and also if I go too fast, uh, which I tend to do, yeah, raise, raise your hand and uh, go ahead and shout out if you get confused. If you guys don't have any presentation, just let me know and I'll get to you on uh, whatever it is I was talking about. So anyway, this is the output, uh, the default output for these views. Um, it gets pretty hairy. Uh, there's a lot of stuff going on here. It's not very friendly. Um, it's hard to update when uh, you're thinking about a, or just a, a markup point of view. Um, but yeah, it's pretty extensive. What I'm going to do is, uh, real quick, I'm going to copy all this code and just kind of, uh, it's going to save into a file. And uh, we're going to into the desktop because I want to keep track of the actual bytes that this file has. So right now it is 29k. That's how big our one file is, our one Drupal page. And uh, over the course of uh, everything that we've been doing here, we're going to bring that down to something pretty significant and you guys are be really happy. So um, real quick, I'll talk about the modules that I have enabled right now. I have a uh, really small module here that's basically just, you know, right here is the focus point right here. Uh, let me go ahead and change this. So you guys can see it. Is that better? Yeah. Okay, the text down. All right, just so you guys know what's going on, I'm basically just outputting one, two, three, four, five views in a single page. And that's it for that. For the theme, you guys can see it is only two files, just an info file and a CSS file, just kind of formatting. And we've already seen that the views are just spitting out regular output. Um, so, how okay. Yeah. Is the theme a sub theme or a whole new theme? Oh, it's just a whole new theme. Okay. Just one single info file and a CSS file. All right, cool. So this is going to be basically the, the area we're going to be working in. All right, so going into the views admin section, we can see our views right here. Um, have you guys ever looked into the theme information section? Anyone hasn't? That's probably better. Okay, so basically what the theme information section shows you is all the different plugins that are required to actually render a theme all together, right? And the views theme, or at least the markup, is basically composed of four different uh, view displays, or view plugins, rather. 
It's the display plugin, a style plugin, a row plugin, and a field plugin. And each one of these kind of kind of just are embedded within itself. And uh, I really wanted to do a slides for this, but um, I didn't. So I'm just going to demonstrate how it works. This is the display. This is the row. This is the uh, actually the style, the row, and then the field itself. Um, and that's what these things are right here. When you click on this link, you can actually see the templates that are created for this. So you get all this markup um, just for the outer section of it. Uh, most of the stuff you could uh, ignore because it's just uh, it's conditional markup. If, uh, if you're logged in as admin, it's going to display the admin links. If there's a pager, it's going to show the pager. Uh, the more important part is uh, this section right here, where it's just displaying a wrapper div that has all the classes uh, regarding that uh, view. And uh, we can check it out right here. So this is the main bulk of the display plugin's template output. Uh, next would be the uh, style plugin, which would be just the uh, uh, file names actually used. Um, views will show you exactly which which template it's using to render this current theme. And as you can see, it's bold right here. It says views view tpl.php. It's saying that is oh, and also there's like a toolkit that says all found in uh, sites all modules views theme. And uh, so currently it's uh, still using whatever's default into the uh, module. Since the existence, existence of this file, we have to flush our cache. So Drupal knows that. Cool. So the image is flushed. We look at the page. And we look back into the information. We hover over this, and now it should say Sites All Theme Care. And that's the name of the theme plan. So now when Views renders, it's going to use the template that I have in my theme specifically. And since I've changed the, uh, the, the wrapping div tag to have an ID, um, I have a way to target my CSS and my JavaScript a little more specifically. So the next iteration, I'm going to do the same thing with the row plugin. Any questions so far? Okay. And since we just updated that, I'm going to do basically updating the registry again. All right. So now we have uh, a view template being overwritten here, and this one's a little more specific. I'm targeting the display map using the uh, the display well, the, the, the view map with the display and what I'm doing is uh, typically your display plugin would render this actually not your display plugin your rows plugin it would render ev all of this for every one of your uh, every one of your rows it does a lot of uh, logic here to figure stuff out. Um, but what I've done instead is uh, I've overwritten this file, and I'm just printing out pseudo content, like H4 title, here's map, and this is body content, and here's just a single image. Just kind of demonstrate going from this to that uh, dramatically changes how your views are rendered. So going back to the actual front facing part of it, before it looked like this. You see, um, you know, title, image, body. Refreshing the page, now we have something really simple. Title, content, and then the body. Uh, actually, the, the image. But when, you're, when you look at the marker for this, typically they would say uh, field. Actually, we can look at this right here and make a comparison. For every field that's being displayed, we have a wrapper tag, and then there's a label associated with it. And yet again, another wrapper tag for span, or you know, div if it's a, it's a block element. And then we actually have the content. But the problem is that we don't need all this extra wrapping text, uh, all this wrapping uh, markup. It actually gets in the way of, uh, of styling because you know they have extra stuff to maintain. So this is probably the most optimal markup that, uh, that you'd want to have basically inside the, the rows plugin. Just an H4 P tag or an image tag. It's just going straight to the content. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my revision where I'm overwriting all of the, the views that we have. And this is five of the views. So you're going to see the markup 
shrink down to a simple one.
But the more critical part in order to actually make this work well is uh, you want to pre-process your variables uh, into your theme so they actually you know, display your content. Um, one thing that you can do is, uh, you notice that down here you have templates for your field. Um, off the side you have an ID of body, an ID of title. Um, inside of your row templates, you have these fields already available. We have to find which object it is, what variable it is. So what I'm going to do This particular view has uh, these fields, image, body, and title. And I see the IDs here, body, title, and field, image, FID. I'm going to replace you know, the, the content that I have here for title with some PHP. So PHP, hence, fields is the variable that has it. The array item is the ID, so this is going to be title. And this is an object, and we have to access the content. So just with that, let's print this out. Scroll down to that particular one. And here we have actual content. We'll do about the rest of it. Which we print fields body. Access the content property. And we'll also do the same thing with the image. We need a report, so PHP prints fields, and this was field image FID. Access that content. And yeah, we should be good, so I'm going to that. All right, cool. Let's refresh this, and now we have our content back. So now this is used exactly how it was before. Default output, but now it's totally custom. It's really slim, and we have more or less full control of all the market value. So that's how you, you, know, you process your, your fields. Now this isn't a true pre-process function. That would be somewhere else. I found it more helpful to, to basically do something like this. So why did you choose those again? Choose what? The, the two variables. Where did you get that? I mean, you so these variables came money. from the view itself. This is the view that we're working with. The fields that I have is image body and title. We can see what view sees as the identifiers for each one of these. When you look at theme information, down here we have a, basically a list of templates just like all the other plugins. But we get to see what the IDs are. Right here we have body, we have title, and we have field image FID. And in order to access the and the row template that we're overriding, these are already pre-processed for you in the variables field. And fields is basically an array that has all these items, and so we plug in basically the ID in here. And that is an object, so we have to access the contents property. There's also a raw property that you can use, like say we're using um, CCK dropdown, right? You won't want to see the, 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 the value that says yes or no, but you want to see the zero or one, true or false fields check. And you want to use the raw property instead. So that's what these, where these fields come from. Okay. Um, so typically what I do here is I'll do title equals that value. And then I basically have like a, a, a legend of all the different variables I'm using and then just plug them into a template. And that way they're more like typical templates who are just printing out a variable. Five minutes. Okay. So that's pre-processing the fields. Um, I'll just kind of skip through because there's not going to be enough time for all of it. Ten different divisions of this. Come to you, sir. Come to you, sir. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Come to me, sir. Good, thank you. All right, so I'll run through this really quick. All these templates inside your theme, it's going to get really, really, really unorganized, really fast, and it's going to be hard to see which view and which display this is because you don't really get um, names to really work with. You have like block one, block two, but the display is called something else completely. Um, one thing I do. And I'm just going to skip through all this. Is uh, I create folders for each one of these. So 
So you could have folders and even subfolders? Okay, so here's the thing. Okay. Views uses something in the theme, and this is Drupal, uh, built in Drupal, something called patterns. And nobody else uses this but views. Uh, basically, a pattern is uh, a template that's already been defined in hook theme, but these templates have a very specific name, like you've seen views, view, field, dash, dash, display, dash, dash, that's no, the beginning. And the, when you're registering your, your, your theme, it's going to find these templates for you and actually register them. Um, that's how all this works. So in order for Drupal to do this, it has to scan through a lot of different files. So because of that, it doesn't matter where you put your, uh, where you put your things in regards to view. Anyway. So okay, here, right. yeah, regards to views. Well, it's actually way yeah. um, So over here, we have uh, themes, views, and I have basically all my views laid out here, map, news, planet, species, and all the displays embedded within, uh, within themselves. And so it's a lot easier to organize, obviously. Um, can you slow that up so... Uh, you guys can really see that, huh? <laughs> so this means that if you're helping with the LADrupal.org site, you can just take your view and, and work on that, and you have your own little folder that you're working with. Yes, that's the key. Since I only have maybe two minutes left, I'm going to jump straight forward to the very last uh, branch of this to kind of show you the big deal and what I'm talking about. Um, all of this stuff really takes a lot of extra work. You have to copy templates, you have to preprocess these variables, you have to specify where your styles are, and uh, I didn't even get to that, <laughs> the style part. But um, at the very end of this, these are more or less themes, and I'll refresh the page so you guys can see. So you don't have to add in that ID anymore. Um, and again, the ID was there so you can have more specific styles, so you're not accidentally overriding other people's work. It's more specific JavaScript, so you have more responsive scripts going on. Um, and then you have like a Lina file as well. It's automatically pre-processing all those variables for you. So all these fields that you have, contents, image, node, and body, or body and title, uh, all these are already pre-processed for you into uh, these variables. So automatically, these variables are already associated with this template. And when you go to your, let's see which one it was. When you go to your template override, you don't have to pre-process these variables for uh, yourself. They're they're already available, so you don't have to have that extra PHP. So now your you know your themers uh, don't have to be. Fine. And uh, one other thing that's actually pretty cool is uh, typically when you have your CSS and your JavaScript, and this is a huge deal that I want to talk about probably in my time for, is that you don't want to include it on every page because it's going to slow down all your other pages. If you have functionality on one page, you don't want to have that behavior or all the JavaScript loaded into another page that's completely unrelated. It's basically, it's, it just slows down the pages on the front end. So what I do is I just call in the JavaScript and the CSS only when it's necessary. Uh, this particular display uh, does that for you also. It will scan, it will find where your template is stored because of you know, the patterns, it knows the directory. And it's going to include all your assets. And, and this is why it's important. <laughs> because the assets aren't included. Um, anyway, it'll update it. And let's go ahead and save this. Well, anyway. <laughs> 
I have no time about that. Do you guys want to talk about this any further? I'm going to stick around. Oh, okay. Okay. We're talking about this, uh, this plugin. Has that, has that been contributed back? Uh, it's, in a, it's in a queue for a uh, review or whatever. Uh, actually, here it is. Um, it has scanned the JavaScript inside of the directory and it found it and all the CSS. And it's going to include it for you. It detects that this is a library, and libraries are typically outside of the scope of the engine modules that way they're both shared. And it's going to, you know, go ahead and remind you that this is a library that's external. Um, and all this is just, it's automatic. The only thing you really have to do in your templates now is just put, put in your, your template file, put in the markup that you want to use, and then whatever CSS and JavaScript, just throw it in there, and that's it. Um, there's no extra PHP that's involved. This is great for, you know, advanced themers who want to do something really far off but still have that where built-in can, ability. Uh, where can we get the, uh, get the tool? It's called Theme Packet. And I'll probably post it on, you know, on the, okay. on the LA sites and then you guys could uh, download it with Josh. Right. The okay. second part about this is that for people who are beginner themers, you don't know anything about theme system, you don't know anything about PHP's or Drupal's API, um, this is a very natural a way of basically just create your template, do your markup, add in your CSS file in a very natural way, refresh the theme registry, and boom, everything works. It's all included. So that's that's a bonus. So. A lot of what Heller showed tonight is a little bit more advanced. Uh, if you do get involved in actually helping out with LAPeople.org and if this is <laughs> this seems um, more advanced than you are, that's okay because he'll actually help you get to the point where this um, it would be much easier for you because Phil has done a lot of work um, and then we'll be working with Terry. I was just going to say one thing. I mean, obviously, you could have done like six presentations. Uh, and, you know, use, these templates are, you know, open up huge doors and tremendous power. But I, I do, uh, you know, one more critical thing is when you started, you were calling them plugins and and plugins, as you know, because you're writing plugins, are, are, are something else that work at a different level. Use templates are templates that work in the theme layer. Plugins work as sort of sub modules. Right, the reason I brought up plugins is that every one of these types of plugins, types, displays, styles, rows, and fields, that they are responsible for building the templates that are you know, associated with them. And uh, each one of those four steps that I demonstrated, that's coming from a plugin. <laughs> oh. they're, not, they're not plugins, they're, they're templates. But obviously the templates are templates, but they come from plugins, so that's the template. And you'll be doing actually a more in-depth session at the camp? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> are, there, are there any other questions about either what Hillary presented or the LADrupal.org site or how you can get involved? Yes. Will, will there be a page on the site about the site and what models are used? There will. It's not there yet. We are actually Christopher.